everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over some testing on different sprocket sizes. So for this video I designed a couple different sizes of sprockets and we had them laser cut out of sheet steel. So the sizes we're going to be looking at today are of course the stock controller, a 48 tooth, 56 tooth, 58 tooth, 60 tooth, and 64 tooth. Now we started doing um, real life testing and we found out pretty fast that when you start throwing large sprockets on there, it's kind of hard to be consistent. So, um, so our in-person data is kind of inconsistent with what we expect. So I'll still show you that, but then at the very end, I'm gonna go over what things theoretically should be, and I'll just talk about my recommendation. So stay tuned, and you can skip around if you like. Thank you. Maybe we'll just average him. Alright, so now I'm going to be interpreting the results and giving you a solid conclusion to walk away with. There's a lot to cover, so instead of just talking, I decided to do this in a presentation format so you have something to look at. We're going to talk about a sprocket's effect on acceleration, top speed, torque, and range. Without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to start out and say that these were not the results that we were expecting. What we expected to see was an improvement in acceleration with every step up in sprocket size. It turns out that on flat ground, with large sprockets, it's impossible to give full throttle out of the gate. 
The Cernon is too small and light to keep the front end down. Because of this, you can't use all the power from the beginning, and it's very difficult to stay consistent when taking off. And as you can see from our results, that we actually had the best average time on the stock sprocket. And this is kind of frustrating for us because when you hop on a bike with a larger sprocket, it's very obvious that it accelerates faster. We just didn't do a very good job at taking off consistently and quickly as fast as possible on every test. So instead of doing this over again, we just need to interpret the results and try to convey um, what the differences are in the most accurate way that we can. And what this means for you is you just need to take in all the information and consider what you want from a larger sprocket and try and figure out what size sprocket works best for your goals. Moving on to the top speed, here are the results. Now, these results are a little closer to what we expected to see aside from the 64 tooth test results. The bigger the sprocket generally means the lower the top speed. As you can see, the 48 tooth sprocket hit 52.5 miles per hour. The 56 tooth sprocket hit 46.1 miles per hour, and the 60 tooth sprocket hit about 43 miles per hour. If you're riding on the road and you value your top speed, then staying with the stock sprocket might be a good idea. Now, to cross check these against what we spec expected from theoretical calculations, you can see that the 56 tooth sprocket checks out at around 45 miles per hour. We didn't test the 58 tooth sprocket because we had a chain breakage, but that should be expected to come in around 43.5 miles per hour. The 62 sprocket was measured pretty close to theoretical at 42 miles per hour. And the one test that didn't really line up was the 64 tooth sprocket. We kind of expected this to be more around 39 miles per hour, but after a couple of tests, we were getting 46 miles per hour. We're not sure if that's an issue with our GPS, but um, I think 40 miles per hour is probably a safer bet for what you're gonna see with a 64 tooth sprocket. So that being said, this was all done on a BAC 4000, only pulling 4,800 watts, which is comparable to about what stock would be. Now, if you bump this up to 7,000 watts, you will be getting higher top speeds across the board. And if you go above that, you know, 72 volt battery or something a little bit more high powered, you can get a lot higher speeds. Now, we didn't do any testing on the stock controller other than uh, with the stock sprocket to get a baseline. But since the results of our previous testing didn't really turn out super great, I think the theoretical values are actually more reliable. And we calculated these for the stock controller since not everybody has the upgraded controller. As you can see here, a 56 tooth sprocket, you can expect about 38 miles per hour. With a 58 tooth, you'll get around 36. With a 60 tooth, you'll get about 35 miles per hour. And with a 64 tooth, you'll get about 33. The top speed is the easiest thing to examine for yourself. Just think about what kind of top speed you need for the riding that you do. Take it in consideration your controller and battery setup and select the sprocket that you think will work best for your application. Going off of your top speed is not a bad route to go when selecting a larger sprocket. So aside from acceleration and top speed, a huge difference of a larger sprocket is an increase in torque. Now, before I get into torque, I just wanna cover the basics since we get a wide range of prior knowledge coming to our videos. So described most simply, torque is a measurement of force multiplied by a distance. If you need a way to, to imagine that on a bike, imagine you have a large lever attached to your rear wheel and you're holding down on it. To fight the motor, the longer your lever is, the less force you need to apply to hold the motor in place. A sprocket does the same thing. Now, another way to think about it that might be a little bit more accurate for a gear is that the ratio of revolutions between your motor and your rear wheel change depending on your gearing. Using a sprocket to change your gearing creates a mechanical advantage 
where the motor turns more revolutions per rotation of your wheel and increases the torque. Anyways, the larger sprocket, the less force needed from the motor to turn the wheel. Therefore, more torque makes the bike pull harder. An increase in torque is also what helps you tractor up technical hills without lugging the motor and losing the ability to accelerate. So, using tooth counts, we can do a simple calculation to determine the theoretical increase in torque for each sprocket. As listed here, a 56 tooth sprocket gives you a 14% increase in torque over the stock 48 tooth sprocket. A 58 tooth will result in a 17% increase. A 60 tooth sprocket correlates to a 20% increase in torque, and a 64 tooth sprocket results in a 25% increase. I feel that percentages are the easiest way to imagine and conceptualize the differences between these sprockets. But if you can't decide from that, then it may be worth it to try out a couple of different sizes and see what feels best. So I wanna talk about the way that a sprocket complements an electric motor. And the best way to do that is to take the look take a look at a torque curve off of a dyno. Now, this dyno graph is of a Suron that is stock, and it's not perfect. I don't really know what is the torque curve and what is the horsepower curve, as they're both labeled horsepower. And also, typically you see revolutions of the motor instead of speed, but this is the only one that I could find. So it still captures the nature of how electric motors have power. Now, I think the spikes at the beginning of this graph may not be totally accurate, just due to the way that electric motors work with a dyno, as it's hard to get perfect results, especially on a motorcycle. So the key here is that electric motors get peak torque early in the rev range, but it still has that period of low torque before it gets to the beginning of the sweet spot and then as you get to the you know rev limit of the motor you start to see that torque fall off the key with the sprockets when you're off-road is that it makes that dead zone at the bottom a little bit easier and more usable and it's also a lot more forgiving to the motor lugging down when you get hung up or lose your momentum going uphill on technical trails. It's hard to quantify, but you might just have to take my word for it. The, the, the place that the sprocket is really gonna help you out is when you're going uphill on technical trails. When you don't have to rely on your momentum and you can just kind of tractor up and still accelerate over technical t terrain, it is a huge advantage. On the stock bike, I found that a 60 tooth was my favorite sprocket size. Um, with an upgraded controller and battery, I've since moved down to a 58 tooth. Um, even a 56 might be a, a better option for people that don't like a super aggressive um, bite on the low end. But you also have to consider that when you go to a larger sprocket, it's shifting it's shifting the the speed that you hit the the sweet spot downward so you actually hit your peak torque at a lower rpm and this is really beneficial when you have to go slow over certain things and you're able to just stay on the power a little bit better now we're going to be talking about how a larger sprocket affects the range of your suron so range is something that's pretty difficult to test and quantify so we decided not to attempt it because we felt that it wouldn't really add to our understanding and it wouldn't produce consistent results that we would trust basically so a general conclusion based on our own writing up to date is that a larger sprocket correlates to an increased range when riding on it off-road single track now while we didn't do specific testing you have to understand that we made a variation of different sprocket sizes and we've all we've ridden on all of them pretty extensively so 
we have a, a pretty good idea of of how this changes and it seems pretty conclusive depending on you know how hard you're riding and or what's going on but it all things held equal a larger sprocket on the type of riding that we do we found gives an increase in range or a decrease in battery consumption if you will now if you're riding on the road and you're just staying at the top speed for extended periods of time, then a sprocket is probably not going to help you save very much battery life, and it's probably not going to increase your range. Now, the sprockets do the most when you're staying right at the beginning of that sweet spot for most of the riding. You're not hitting your, your top discharge too long, lower top speeds. That's where you're going to see the biggest difference. Now, another YouTuber of the name Electric is Better did a video on his experiences with a 58 tooth sprocket. And he was doing enduro races where he did a battery swap in between. And he found that he was getting 30 to 46% less battery usage than stock, depending on the nature of the trail but that's pretty huge 30 percent less battery usage is substantial now he has a video on it so i'm not going to talk about it too much check him out um we're not affiliated with him in any way but he puts out some good stuff thanks for watching this video i tried to be as brief as possible while still covering everything if you found this video helpful please hit that like button and subscribe. It helps us out and it also helps you stay in the loop on future videos. I hope everyone has a good day.